Let's get right on. We're back here with a sturdy spirit of justice where we're beginning with trial day one. Trial day one <laughs> for case turnabout revolution. That case is what the case we are starting is. And we'll be heading to trial oh so soon. Apollo versus Phoenix. It's an exciting time to be alive. And a bit of a scary one. And I'm a little tired. Let's see if I can't wake myself up with some, <laughs> some vocal cord warm-ups. I'm fine. All right, that'll do. May 17th, 10.08 a.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby, number three. Just so you know, I'm not gonna take sides. Message received, loud and clear. Good, because I don't like this one bit. Uh, you and Daddy should be on the same team. Sorry, Trucy. Wow, she's really mad. I mean, don't you, I, I get it. <laughs> All the stuff you've been through, how few allies you have in the legal world. I'm sorry too, little lady. This is all my fault. I don't think she's gonna blame him. I'm just worried things will never be the same between Daddy and Apollo. If they go through with this. Is that all? Well, I wouldn't worry about that. That's the way it is with us men. We may fight, but we don't burn bridges. Well, I appreciate you trying to assuage your fears, but I think you of all people should know that's not true. Really? Sure. One minute we're trading blows and... The next, we're having drinks together. We're simple creatures at heart. <laughs> I sure hope you're right. Sorry, my Apollo! Athena! Uh, there you are. What happened with your voice? <laughs> what happened with you and Mr. Wright yesterday? Uh oh, um, about that, uh, I ended up going to the wrong airport. I was waiting there thinking his flight was really late, and before I knew it, I dozed off. <sighs> By the time I woke up, it was already dark. Damn. <laughs> I'm glad you didn't get, like, mugged. I figured something like that had happened. Being late and dozing off are the two things you do best. Ah! Guilty as charged? I mean, <laughs> she's a pretty banging defense attorney as well, but sure. Dozing off is what she does best. Does that mean she's gonna be our co-counsel for this? Sweet. So then I, I take it you have no idea what today's case is about. Not a clue. Sorry. Um, what is today's case about, if I might ask? Another locked room mystery? A suspect with a flimsy alibi? <laughs> a dying message? Sorry, strike three, you're out. It's a civil case. A civil case? You act like I'm speaking Swahili here? Uh, it's just the right anything agency specializes in criminal law, or so I thought. In civil cases, there are no prosecutors, right? Instead, both parties retain an attorney? Right. And the other attorney is someone you know very well. Really? Who? The trial will begin shortly. I'm sorry, there's no time for me to say the words Phoenix right to you. We have to walk through that door. Please proceed to the courtroom at once. Okay, let's do this. Apollo, wait, who's the other attorney? A and where's Mr. Wright? No time to explain, let's go. I mean, the other attorney is Mr. Wright. It doesn't take that, that takes less time to say than there's no time to explain, let's go. <laughs> okay, right behind you. It's not like it. Maintains the drama. She's still gonna see him in a minute. May 7th, uh, May 17th, 10 30 a.m. District Court, courtroom number six. Boosh! Ha! Boom, baby! <laughs> Day one, court is now in session. All rise! Court is now in session! Oh, um. Uh, is this some sort of practice session? A mock trial, perhaps? Um. No, 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 it's not, Your Honor. Mm -mm. It's the real deal, Your Honor. Hmm. So then you two have had a falling out. I won't have you using my courtroom for that, you know. It's nothing like that, Your Honor. Mm. Exactly. It just so happens that we have different clients in this case. I see. Oh, I see. Well, here's to hoping this has no adverse effect on your working relationship. You can say that again. I had no idea where we're going to get to the boss today. Uh, you sure this is a good idea, Apollo? What? Do you want to switch sides? Honestly, I'd rather be anywhere but here right now. Well, at least she is here. I'm really going to need her help. Mr. Justice. Uh, yes? Don't expect me to pull any punches just because you're the opposing lawyer. You know that thing I said yesterday? It still holds. <laughs> As I said, the kid gloves are off. And come what may, they'll stay off. Same here, Mr. Wright. If it's a fight you want, it's a fight you'll get! <laughs> Bailiff, no fighting in this courtroom. <laughs> Come on, boy. Good thing no one has a butter knife, or otherwise you can cut the tension in this room with it. Jeez, you guys are really chomping at the bit, aren't you? Isn't it champing at the bit? 
expression? Mm, I don't mind a good fight between co-workers. Just keep this civil case civil. You don't mind a good fight? What does that mean? <laughs> now then, if the plaintiff would take the stand, we may begin. Indeed we mate. Right, left, right, left, halt! Noble judge, members of the gallery, good day to you. I am politician, this is but the start of my epic campaign, and you all have the honor of witnessing it. I believe the youth of this country are our very future. Too long have they been looked down on and given the cold shoulder. So to them I say, ask not what you can do for your country, ask what you can do for me! <laughs> oh, this guy's writing us off the chain. Mr. Titian, what is that crazy contraption you're riding in? <laughs> it's my custom-made election-winning campaign mobile. Beautiful, isn't it? Uh... You're at a witness stand, not a campaign podium. So come out of there this instant. <laughs> He's actually going to do it? Oh, goody. I was worried. <laughs> He's got the little <laughs> name thing. All right. Uh, now, would the plaintiff's attorney, Mr. Wright, please explain the complaint filed against the defendant? Mm. Mr. Richardson's complaint against the defendant is simple. The defendant, one Dirk Sadmati, stole my client's family heirloom. Oh, sorry, I thought you said... <laughs> my mind, like, switched those words around even though I said them correctly, and I thought it was my family's client's heirloom. I was like, what do you mean your family's client? Stole my client's family heirloom, the crystal of Amy Faye. It would have been so wild if, if he had Maya on the bench with him. Mr. Attition merely seeks its return. This wouldn't have happened if that archaeologist hadn't kicked the bucket. I see. Well, Mr. Justice, let's have your opening statement, if you would. The fact that he said that right then is weird, like, weirding me out. That feels like that's a setup for a flashback later. Right, my opening statement would have to be that he did. <laughs> the defense asserts that the item in question is the Founder's Orb, a sacred relic from Kura'in. Uh, go on. It seems someone asked an archaeologist, Dr. Archie Buff, to study the orb. Dr. Buff determined that it was a Kura'inese national treasure known as the Founder's Orb. The very orb that was stolen from a treasure room in Kura'in several weeks ago. Why, yes, I, I saw a news report about that. Mercifully, the report did not mention the name Dirk Salmati, otherwise I'd have him arrested and executed immediately. The theft of a Kurainese national treasure caused quite an uproar in the kingdom. <laughs> well, we believe it was not, in fact, a theft in the traditional sense. No, 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 no! Oh my god, sorry. It's, uh, it always scares me. Even though I, we learned that it doesn't actually solve it for you. But rather that it was spirited out of Kurain by someone for Dr. Buff to study. You don't say. And? Around that time, an acquaintance of the defendant learned of Dr. Buff. He made contact with the doctor who agreed to hand over the orb. Apparently, the doctor wanted nothing to do with it once he learned it had been stolen. It seems you even have a transfer agreement between both parties? Oh, so we've actually done the real world thing where we, like, submit all our evidence beforehand? <laughs> or did you just guess that? Or maybe uh, Emma mentioned it. Mr. Salamadi also agreed to return the Founders Orb to the Kingdom of Kura'in once the doctor verified it was the real thing. Well, we don't have a written agreement from him saying that, but he can testify as to that, I guess. Not that I assume he wants to. <laughs> Step foot in a court of law for that reason. I see. So this dispute centers on whether the item in question is the Founder's Orb of the Crystal of Amy Fay. That, in turn, will determine the object's rightful owner. I mean, sort of. It's a it's an orb made of crystal. Can it not be both? And if it is, then who's who's in the right? <laughs> I mean, I maintain that if you had a crystal orb, you would refer to it as an orb, with the crystal being a descriptor. That's like if you had a ruby necklace and you were like, it's a ruby! It's like, it's a necklace, first and foremost. It just has a ruby in it. That's a ridiculous thing to say. No human would, in the history of Earth, would ever be like, have you seen my ruby? They'd be like, have you seen my necklace? And the email refers to it as, as an orb made of crystal, so I don't even understand how this is a <laughs> trial. At the very least, we can confirm Buff thought it was the orb in seconds. That in turn will determine the object, object's rightful owner. I better be my game. Going up against Mr. Wright won't be a walk in the park. Mm. Come to think of it, the name Dirk Salmati sounds awfully familiar. Oh boy. Well, the thing is, Apollo, as Athena says, you mostly specialize in criminal law, and Phoenix doesn't do many civil cases either, right? <laughs> so he's probably out of his element here as well. I wouldn't be too worried. <laughs> mm. Come to think of it, the name Dirk Salmati sounds awfully familiar, but I can't recall where I've heard it. Oh, it's probably your imagination, Your Honor. He's just a tourist after all. Why would you even say that? <laughs> My imagination, you say? Are you sure about this, Apollo? He's a wanted criminal in Kurain, isn't he? In Kurain, yes. Here, he's just a tourist. Uh, very well. Uh, let's begin the proceedings. Brady, would you bring in the first witness? 
No, Your Honor. <laughs> Don't feel like it. This is someone we haven't met. Oh, never mind. It's Emma. I don't remember her wearing shoes like that. Not that I was taking note. Anyway. <laughs> Emma? Show some manners. We're in court. Oh, I know. It's it's just, uh... This is a civil trial, so I, I was surprised to see a detective you take the stand. I had her do some digging on Dr. Buff. What for? You disappoint me, Apollo. First, you know I'm not just a detective. I'm a forensic scientist. Do try to remember that. Second, you owe Mr. Wright an apology. After all he's done for you, you have some nerve. Eh... First, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, and second, I'm really just trying to do my job. You'll never get anywhere with that attitude. Take some advice from someone who's been there. Why do I feel like I'm on trial here? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Detective Sky, your testimony if you please. Witness testimony. The doctor's dark secret. Is it really that unusual to have a... I mean, a man has died still. The circumstances of that are suspect, so even if it's a civil case, I don't think a detective being around is all that unusual. The doctor's dark secret. The police have had their eyes on Dr. Buff for some time, and just today, a number of stolen artifacts were discovered in his study. Oh? Among them were a priceless urn and a statue that were stolen from the Fey Clan. Not gifted. It seems the doctor would do anything to study artifacts, including steal them. As for the relic at the center of this dispute, he likely stole it from the Etitian residence. Hmm. The doctor is a thief? Why am I just hearing about this now? <laughs> well, cat burglar isn't something he put on his resume. He was more careful than that. But the fact is, he was a classic treasure hunter. A treasure hunter, huh? Like people who have thrilling adventures in exotic places, risking life and limb for glory. Uh, Don't Dr. Buff was the star of his own hit movie series, Athena. Out of respect for the dead, I will say that Dr. Buff wasn't doing it to get rich. Apparently, uh, <laughs> that's the only reason I'm bringing this up. Because I <laughs> out of respect for the dead. Apparently, he only wanted to borrow artifacts to study them. He would then return them as soon as his research was finished. I mean, that's still a crime. According to the doctor's child, he would even repair or restore some of the artifacts he stole before returning them. That's definitely, like, considering considered defiling said items. He believed he was honoring the dead by discovering their history through artifacts. But whatever lofty ideals he held, it makes no difference. Larceny is larceny. Yes, um, he certainly sounds no different from a regular thief to me. So, let's say for a moment that the Doctor really did moonlight in stealing artifacts. Might he not have stolen the Founder's Orb in Kura'in and brought it back here himself? Nope. There's no record of him traveling overseas the pa over the past few years. Plus, he couldn't very well leave his reclusive child at home all alone. And it's true, if, um, if there's no record of people coming and crossing overseas, there's no way for them to cross overseas. We've proven that with Dirk Sadmari. Come on, Phoenix. <laughs> so what do you mean he couldn't very well leave his reclusive child at home all alone? He's got a drone. Mm, uh, then this really must be the crystal of Amy Fay. Mm. Yes, he stole it from the ethician residence, probably so he could study it. Uh, this is the left hook I did not need. I bet you never saw that coming, Apollo. Yeah, when Mr. Wright said that the kid gloves were off, he wasn't kidding. <laughs> Mr. Justice, you may proceed with your cross-examination. Oh good, I thought you were just going to be like, well, I see no need to problem. Not even giving me a chance, as per usual. Cross-examination. Polo versus Phoenix. The Doctor's dark secret. It's not nothing out of the uh, ordinary with Emma's testimony as yet. Only Phoenix's <laughs> weird, weird reasoning. That this reclusive child who can drone food for himself couldn't have been left alone, and that this guy could never have crossed overseas without a record of it. Not one word of that is true. The police had their eyes on Dr. Buff for some time. It looks like we're gonna have to push on this first bit uh, uh, up front, I would say. And just today, a number of stolen artifacts were discovered in his study. Among them, over a priceless urn, and a statue that were stolen from the Fae Clan. It seems the doctor would do anything to study artifacts, including steal them. As for the relic at the center of this dispute, he likely stole it from the Etitian residence. What do you think, Athena? Shall we push on all that? The trial's barely started and we're already backed into a corner. To make matters worse, the judge seems to agree with the plaintiff's case. But we've still got to give it our all. Indeedly, indeedly. Right, let's just push on all of it, I say. Police have had their eyes on Dr. Buff for some time. Hold it! How exactly did Dr. Buff arouse the suspicion of the police anyway? Chalk it up to good old-fashioned sleuthing. After investigating countless artifact thefts over the past few years, the police finally zeroed in on him, and the doctor became their prime suspect. There was nothing we could do to get into his house or look through the window and find them all, of course, until he died. That would be ridiculous. I mean, it's a pretty easy statue to conceal. It's only like eight feet tall and made of shining gold. A number of those artifact thefts occurred in Karine Village, too, if I might add. And they started right around the time the doctor moved there. But I, he was never arrested. I take it there was nothing con concrete linking him to a crime? Like a giant golden statue in his house? 
know, which is why we were never able to get a search warrant in the first place. It's hard to arrest artifact thieves unless you catch them red-handed. Again, he didn't keep it near a massive window or anything. There was no way we could find it, you see. <laughs> I mean, seriously, from here you couldn't see in to, like, the six different huge things he stole? <laughs> Granted, I don't know if you need a search warrant to look in through someone's window. I kind of assume not. I assume the search warrant is just to get into the... Well, yeah, I guess he needs the search warrant to get on the property at all, otherwise it's trespassing. That's fair enough, I guess. How in the hell did he get such a huge statue through his doorway? <laughs> or, like, anywhere without being seen. It's hard to arrest artifact thieves unless you catch them red-handed. Still, the police had them under constant surveillance. Not constant enough. And just today, a number of stolen artifacts were discovered in his study. Hold it! Hold it! Are you sure these allegedly stolen artifacts are the real deal? Mm, they're not fakes, that's for sure. Take the urn, for example. Apparently, it's an extremely int intricate work of art. Its design, cracks, and other features would be impossible to replicate perfectly. Well, I know a... <laughs> A certain overall wearing cutie who would disagree with that, but actually I've had a few run-ins with that urn myself, so I was shocked to see it there in the studio, uh, in the doctor's study. I can say without a doubt that that urn was stolen from the fake land. I mean, you're not <laughs> legally really able to. You're not an expert on the matter, but I believe that you believe that. I see. Detective Sky, please continue with your testimony if you would. Among them were a priceless urn and a statue that were stolen from the fake land. Why, why don't you let? Your detective forensic specialist to be the one to comment on the de detective forensic stuff, Phoenix, please. Among them were priceless art and a statue that were stolen from the fake land. Hold it! It's my voice! <laughs> it hurts! Hold it! Were any other stolen artifacts found besides those belonging to the face? Yes. For instance, this statue of Godzilla is prized artifact. Remember the large relief on the wall? It was chiseled out of some ancient ruins in the kingdom of Karain several years ago. How several? Chiseled out? Didn't that damage it? Well, he did restore the parts that were so faded you could barely see them anymore. I'm sorry, so he's been to Kura'in in like a few years ago and stolen this thing that no one's allowed to look at? <laughs> so no one- so it could have been that he stole it years ago and no one know, knew? And we're not gonna investigate this at all? Well, he did restore the parts that were so faded you could barely see them anymore. It seems he intended to return it someday, so one could say his intentions were good. But good intentions are no get out of jail free card, that's a fact. If I might add, with respect for the deceased, the quality of the restoration was apparently exceptional. <laughs> you buttering up the judge? He's behaving so weirdly. <laughs> it seems the doctor invested a lot of money in hiding, hiring an extremely talented specialist. He sounds like a good man. They took a wrong turn somewhere. I guess Sarge takes after him in that way. What makes you say that? The child he still hasn't had time to take a wrong turn, I'd say. Any further questions? If not, nah, that further questions are, are required. Seems the doctor would do anything to study artifacts, including steal them. Hold it! Have these alleged thefts been going on for some time? At least five years, as far as we can tell. All the recent thefts have been local. But uh, but before moving to Karain Village, he'd been stealing from ruins around the world, including Kurain. But let's let's ignore that for now. <laughs> Dr. Buff was an international criminal? This data lends itself to but one conclusion. Dr. Buff was a thief. What, the data that he was stealing? <laughs> Let's see, I, 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 man, glad the detective's here, I never would have figured out that the person who was stealing was a thief. Why is everyone so weird today? As for the relic at the center of this dispute, he likely stole it from the Atitian residence. Hold it! You claim he stole a family heirloom from the Atitian residence. But claiming something that doesn't make it true. Unfortunately, it is true. But why'd you say it was most likely it's true? <laughs> a second ago. Why is everyone in this case acting so weird on the first cross-exam? How can you be so sure? A police report was filed concerning the theft. One year ago, in fact. What? A whole year ago? Why is my voice doing this? What? A whole year ago? August 25th of last year, to be exact. What day is it today? It's like August 28th in real life. What the hell is my phone? The report states, and I quote, The crystal of Amy Faye was discovered to be missing from the Etitian storehouse at 10 a.m. The storehouse lock had been picked. Signed, Politician Wimperson. Is that sorry? <laughs> well, your old report certainly lends the plaintiff's claim credence, but doesn't prove it. The doctor really could have stolen the crystal of Amy Faye. Well, why did she assert it was true but 100% a second ago? Not only that, Your Honor, but the Founder's Orb was only found to be missing several weeks ago. That is nearly a year after the crystal theft was reported. Sorry? Oh, the Founder's Orb was only found to be missing several weeks ago. You know, that thing that no one's allowed to look at and so no one could know was missing. <laughs> Therefore, I believe we must consider the Orb and the Crystal to be two separate items. I hope you- let's- let's keep that energy up, Phoenix! <sighs> Politician Wimperson? Not the most awe-inspiring talent, is it? I see why he cut it. Not that he inspires confidence without it. Still, I'd probably do the same in his shoes. 
I mean, <laughs> I didn't realize anyone in this world <laughs> could notice that their names were unusual. A report filed a year ago by one Mr. Politician Wimperson for the theft of Crystal Amy Fay. A police report was filed about the Crystal's theft a year ago. May I have a look at that right quick, please? The Crystal of Amy Fay was discovered to be missing from the attention storehouse at 10 a.m. The storehouse lock had been picked. Politician Wimperson. Very well, that's pretty straightforward and more or less what they already said. But the theft of the Founder's Orb was only reported a few weeks ago. So the Crystal's police report was filed way before the orb was found missing. That, that suggests this stolen relic is the Crystal of Amy Fay, as Mr. Titian Wimperson asserts. Simply because, uh, uh, um, Dr. Buff allegedly hadn't been to Kurain in the past few months? Is that why you're saying it suggests that? Because, I mean, there's like six things wrong with that. One, he could have gone and just, if he was an international criminal, <laughs> who was under suspicion by the police, he would could, he would probably have wanted to go without, like, flying a public airline. Two, no one was allowed to look at the freaking orbs. So no, of course they only noticed it was missing way late. Why is everyone being so weird? Hmm. I doubt the police report is a fake. After all, Emma is the one who submitted it as evidence. But still, I feel like something we learned in that police report is important somehow. I mean, I guess so. I don't know that any of it's important right away. Uh, the lock had been picked, maybe? I don't think... I don't know. The extra last name could have been important. The date, the August 25th of last year, could be important. You got me. Nevertheless, uh, one last thing to push on, and then we'll be... Oh, wait, what? Never mind. I'm wrong. I thought it was supposed to be a push on everything kind of deal, yo. Wait, am I supposed to find something? A place to... Uh, oh, God. So they want me to press... To present the, the, the letter, some the, the report somewhere? All right, I got nothing. Is there something I should know about the Attition Residence's locks that I don't? Or is the fact that they've... It, it was a year ago correlate to just one of these some of these so let me just push on everything again and get that and, re and rehear them oh no i'm toast I've, I've, I've i'm already losing on the first cross exam you don't have a date on this email unfortunately oh i see um he only moved here six months ago right is that what we're getting at i don't actually know how to say that i don't have any evidence that refers to him uh moving here six months ago but if, if the report was filed a year ago and he only moved here six months ago that seems pretty i mean not that he couldn't have taken a train here and stolen it without living here but maybe that's what's in question they don't want me to say that he couldn't have picked a lock without reading right oh no i can't say that because i would be comparing two pieces of evidence which we can't do all right i'm super weirded out everyone behaved weirdly and now i don't understand what i'm supposed to do on this first cross exam <laughs> help I mean, you'd assume just game design-wise that I have to pre I present the uh, police report somewhere on account of the fact that if it wasn't that, then I could have gotten through here without picking up the police report. I had to push to get that police report, and then nothing else has changed. So presumably that's the only thing. You wouldn't be allowed to skip that. <laughs> so you have to. You would have had to have pushed and gotten that and then used it somewhere here. Also, they're doing this weird thing again where this thing doesn't mention that the, that it was filed a year ago. Only It only mentions it here. I don't really understand why, but all right. The police have had their dies on Dr. Buff for some time. There's no point in disproving that. Just today, a number of stolen artifacts were discovered in his study. I don't see how the report... I, I mean, maybe they want... I guess it could be that they want me to put the, the police report here because... No, he did not likely steal it from the Attition Residence because he was not here a year ago. He only moved here six months ago, but we don't have any evidence that says he moved here six months ago. So I don't think Apollo will have the context... Everything I know about this game series tells me that Apollo will not have the context if I present the report to say if it was filed a year ago and he moved here six months ago, that doesn't hold up. But I assume I have to present the robbery reports on one of these because otherwise we could have skipped it by not pushing. If we're saying he's been stealing stuff from all over Karain Village, then the robbery report does not doesn't corroborate or deny that. It has nothing, no relation, really. Seems the doctor would do anything to study artifacts, including steal them. The robbery report does not... This, I mean, I'll, uh, I'm probably overthinking this. Let me just put the robbery report here. No, that wasn't it. Okay. There's something off about that statement. Mm, it seemed perfectly reasonable to me. <laughs> no, something's definitely not right if you listen really carefully. Gambler once saying, you gotta know when to hold him, no one to fold him. Oh, I love this one. No one to walk away, no one to run. I'm not familiar. I don't know which penalty hurts more, the judges or their singing. <laughs> right, I figured that wouldn't work, but I, I just had to rule it out. Oh, I can hold it on the same point. Sorry, I should have done that. This police report may say the crystal of Amy Faye, but how do you know it's this relic right here? Because Mr. Atishan has stated as much. Well, I'm not buying it. Apollo, I was thinking, the plaintiff's legal name is pretty distinctive. Politician Wimperson? Do we have any evidence related to his initials or his name? 
Oh. Well, yeah, I... the email, but I was supposed to gamble health on that? <laughs> How the fuck was I supposed to know that that would be okay to do and not lose health on? Find this stupid motherfucking email. F this whole fucking game. F me, I guess. Whatever. Nothing means anything. Obviously, three letters being the same here means I'm right and I was supposed to know. Sorry, sorry. But like, I guess that way back when we first looked at the email. But how? That's not evidence, that's a guess. <laughs> Why was I supposed to stake health on that? Especially when we have another character with the initials PW. <laughs> anyway, whatever, it's fine. To be fair, I didn't make the connection when they added the, the Wimperson that that might have been what PAW meant. I made that connection when we first had the email, but I had no idea I was supposed to use it here. <laughs> the doctor stole the relic from the plaintiff. Are you sure? Because that statement doesn't agree with a certain piece of evidence. What do you mean? Take a look at this. Does anyone have a computer I can plug this into? <laughs> what about it? This contains an email from the doctor's computer. Email? In that little piece of plastic? Mm. I'm afraid I don't understand. Uh, oh, um, uh, this stick here can store all sorts of computer data. I still don't get it. Here, just look at this. I'll plug it into Widget. <laughs> Apparently the doctor was reporting his research findings to a certain individual. Now take a look at this. Is the police report Detective Sky presented to this court? You can see the plaintiff's legal name on it. Politician Wimperson. I can see why he dropped Wimperson from his name, but that's hardly breaking news. Look closer, Your Honor. Ah! His initials! Right. The plaintiff's full legal name is Politician Wimperson. Now consider this. The email's recipient address starts with these three letters. P... P-A-W. Ah! Don't tell me! No, but I will anyway. The individual... <laughs> Why is you guys Emma freaking out? Your reputation isn't on the line here, it's me and Phoenix's. Oh, but I will anyway. The individual who hired the doctor to study the disputed item... <clears throat> ...is none other than politician Wimperson. Wait, then that means... Exactly. He wouldn't have asked the man who stole his family heirloom to study it. Therefore, how could this possibly be the crystal of Amy Faye? Weird, weird contradiction. We never checked the doctor's emails. I couldn't even figure out the password to his computer. This plaintiff willingly left the orb in the doctor's care so he could study it, at the behest of his benefactor. Wait, then what about the police report? I have all the details of the theft right here. It's probably for another relic, the real crystal of Amy Faye. He's just using the report as a way to claim that our orb is actually his stolen Objection! crystal. Objection! <clears throat> And how are you so certain that P.A.W. refers to my client's initials? Maybe the email's recipient was a dog lover. Perhaps. So let's get to know your client a little better, shall we? Mr. Politician Wimperson. <laughs> Didn't get carried in this time. A market improvement. <laughs> I suppose shutting down detractors is all part of a politician's job. Answer me this, Mr. Etician Wimperson. What is... Your shoe size, your favorite food, your birthday... I guess this is the only thing we have a number for, but again, that's just a guess. July 11th? What's your birthday? <laughs> Surely everyone puts their birthday in their email. What is your birthday? My birthday? It's July 11th! But what's it to you? Oh, I see. You can address birthday gifts to my office. But full disclosure, I only accept gifts valued at $1,000 or more. <laughs> uh. hmm? Why is everyone gone silent? How can anyone be that self-centered? Oh, right, politician. Um, did everyone hear that? He said, July 11th. July 11th, or rather 711, matches the numbers in the email address. <laughs> Both the name and birthday are a match. I hardly think that's a coincidence. Wait. Why, you sneaky little... Uh, looks like someone finally decided to join the conversation. <laughs> would the plaintiff care to explain? I would like to say... That is quite... Quite what? Quite a thing, you've said. Um, any other thoughts? No for the comments. I stand by my previous statement. Which was what again? Could you reiterate for that? Oh, okay, goodbye. Hold it! You can't just walk away. Even politicians have to explain themselves in a court of law. I'm afraid I simply don't know how it happened. I can't possibly explain matters outside of my purview. Perhaps it was a mistake on the part of my secretary. Oh, no you don't, you slippery eel. 
Mr. Wright, would you care to respond? I won't argue your assertion. My client lent the treasure in question to the doctor and asked him to study it. It seems that much is a fact. Now we're getting somewhere? I mean, it's still not a fact. It's just pretty likely. I mean, PAW711, fair enough. Once we have that much information, I guess that that's like enough to have an assertion, I would say. However, it has no bearing on the issue of ownership. How so? Mr. Retician, I fully understand your position here. You had to hide the fact that you sent the crystal out to be studied. Your family would have been very upset if they had found out. It's a family heirloom, after all. You've gotta be kidding me! Mr. Wright is, well, right, of course. But then he always is. That's why he's my lawyer. The crystal's a precious Titian family heirloom and has been for centuries. But Dr. Buff was so eager to study its proud heritage, I just couldn't say no. I didn't even tell my grandfather. Objection! Objection! But in order to win the backing of your so-called benefactor, you were going to give what you claim to be the crystal of Amy Faye to that person? You were going to give a precious family heirloom away, just like that? I was going to explain everything to my grandfather later, honest! My client's grandfather is very proud of his grandson for following in his footsteps. And if refusing him would have meant dashing the dreams of his darling grandson. I doubt the kind the old man could have said no. <clears throat> well, grandchildren are meant to be spoiled. But uh, surely you would think a, a storied politician would prefer that their grandson become a politician out of merit, not out of bribery? Bribing some random alleged benefactor? That's what grandfathers are for! This feels like a character assassination of his grandfather. <laughs> Your Honor, please. I mean, it's been in the family for centuries. My grandfather thinks highly of my talents as a politician. That's why he entrusted me with this very important name placard today. Which I've just gotten my sturdy, stank-ass breath on. A petition. <laughs> so I'm sure he would have been okay with me using the crystals I saw fit. <sighs> Grandpa's spoiled little brat. <laughs> okay. Apollo, I'm mad too, but let's just calm down a bit. I think the judge is buying it, Apollo. No surprise there. He's always going on about his own grandchildren, after all. Excuse me, can I leave now, Mr. Wright? I believe my work here is done. Since when does the attorney get to dismiss the witness from the entire courtroom? Don't you go back into the gallery? What the f*** is up with this trial? By all means, Detective Sky, thank you for your assistance. You're welcome. It's nice to testify to civil trial once in a while. See you around. Goodbye forever, I guess! Won't need that detective back. <laughs> mm, it seems the facts have changed somewhat. Mr. Titian Wimperson apparently left his, lent his family heirloom to Dr. Buff. Mr. Justice, how would the defense like to proceed? Oh, um... All right, now what? Apollo, let's hear what they know about his so-called crystal of Amy Faye. Maybe we can find some inconsistencies in their statements. I sure as cuss hope so. Right. Okay then, Mr. Wright, if the item in question really is an Titian family heirloom... Let's hear all your client knows about it. Of course. Mr. Titian Wimperson? I mean, maybe that's... A lot of this weirdness is just the differences between civil trials and the murder trials, but... Hell! <laughs> Please tell the defense everything you know about the crystal's origin. Actually, I'd like to go too! Is that a right, attorney? <laughs> Will you dismiss me from this courtroom forever? Alright, now then, listen and learn! This is the tale of the crystal of Amy Faye, and the illustration in the illustrious history of the Titian clan. Are you ready? Our story begins back in the old country when the Attrition family reigned supreme. Witness testimony. The illustrious history of the Attrition clan. My ancestor was praised as a benevolent ruler. He protected the spirit mediums of minority back then from the rest of the locals. Some discriminated against them, you see, while others tried to abuse their power. As thanks, Amy Faye gave the crystal she had specially made as a gift to him. I am a descendant of that great lord. As such, my political power and influence is backed by centuries of history! Right, I didn't- I once again did not see any immediate contradictions. Well, that devolved into a great load of self-aggrandizing propaganda fast. As you can see, the Crystal of Amy Faye is an heirloom of the esteemed House of Attition. And you have proof that it has always been in the Attition family. Mm. I have someone who gave a statement to that effect. My client's neighbor, one Ives Shinetto. Ives Shinetto. Ives Shinetto. Ives Shine to? Ives Shine to. Ives. Ives Shinetto. Ives Shine to. Ives. I've got nothing. Age 85 gave the following statement The Atticians showed me the crystal back when I was but alive. Objection! Objection! <clears throat> Can we really trust the memory of an old man? M Mr. Justice. Would you care to explain that statement to the judge? Oh, uh, I didn't mean, uh, 
<laughs> what I'm trying to say is, um... Never underestimate the memory of your elders. I may forget my verdicts the next day, but the memories of my past is clear as day. I'm not sure you should admit to that, <laughs> the first one. Therefore, I find Mr. Ivesine 2's statement to be perfectly credible. Wow, did you see how Mr. Wright got the judge on his side? That's definitely a trick I want up my sleeve. <sighs> You're not helping, Athena. You may cross-examine the witness, Mr. Justice. This case is something else. Cross-examination! The illustrious history of the Titian clan. My ancestor was praised as a benevolent ruler. He protected the spirit mediums a minority back then from the rest of the local. Oh, oh, some discriminated against them, you see, while others tried to abuse their power. As thanks, any Faye gave the crystal she had specially made as a gift to him. I am a descendant of that great lord. Oh! Well, I, this is the first time I've noticed that this little mark is from the founding, the Karayin founding period, which does corroborate that statement. Sorry, is this from the Karayinese founding period? Yes, it's from the Karayin founding period. Interesting. So in reality, that would suggest that this here is the Founder's Orb and not, in fact, the crystal. Which, again, it's not proof. It's an assumption I'm making that seems pretty solid, which is what we just had in the last testimony, so hopefully that works. I am a descendant of that great lord. Oh, sorry, no, we already read it, so now I'm in cross-exam mode. Assess my political power and influence is back by centuries of history. Well, I should be able to put the, the current, this here, right? Objection! Objection! Yeah, okay, good. For, I was I was worried. The game worried me there. He stated that Amy Faye had the crystal made for your ancestor. So am I to assume it was made in Japan? That's right. The craftsmanship is unbeatable. <laughs> well, that's strange. I don't see how your so-called crystal could have been made there. What are you talking about? It's quite obvious if you take a closer look at this. Take that! Take a look at the distinctive design here. According to Dr. Buff, it's a Miedema motif. I, I, every time it's Miedema, I always then fail the motif. Because the, the T is like soft in Miedema. It's a Miedema motif dating back to the early days of the Kingdom of Kura'in. The Kingdom of Kura'in? And you base this on... Here. This piece of evidence, Your Honor. These are the doctor's research notes on the Founder's Orb. This is the box in which the orb was originally stored. It features the same pattern as the one found in the orb. Mm, they do look like the same pattern. <coughs> Therefore, I assert that the disputed item must have been made in the Kingdom of Kura'in. <laughs> oh, ah, my eye placard! Objection! Obje Objection! The Kurain channeling technique originated in the kingdom of Kurain. And Amy Faye is known to have traveled there to train. Since when? <laughs> with that in mind, what's to say she didn't bring that pattern back with Objection. her? Objection! But since this is clearly a Kurainese design, not even you can deny <clears throat> the possibility that it was made there in the kingdom of Kurain. Objection. Objection! Anything's possible to some extent. Doesn't make it true. So you can't conclude that the orb is from Kurain based solely on that pattern. If it were that simple, I could just as easily say it's Japanese! Well, it didn't stop us from the initials, but... I have to agree with Mr. Wright, the pattern alone proves nothing. But that also means there's no basis to claim that the item in dispute was made in Japan, either. Hmm. At this rate, we're going nowhere fast. It was probably made in Timbuktu. He's right, we're just spinning our wheels here. I wonder if we have any evidence that could break this stalemate. Hmm. Evidence that could break this stalemate. I mean, it probably exists, but does it exist here? No. I mean, it probably exists. Why don't we just show it to some Karainese royals and ask them? <laughs> that would make it easier. <laughs> I got nothing. Uh, it exists, for sure. <laughs> the defense would like to present a piece of evidence to the court. Well, I didn't know he was going to say that. A piece that will finally break the stalemate. Well, you sure piqued my interest. Let's see what you've got. All right. Uh, I will now prove that this is in fact the Founder's Orb. <laughs> Shit. But they wouldn't let me do that if there wasn't some piece of evidence that ha that it worked with. The fact that this giant death robot is marked on the map also concerns me. Oh, this this is the Founder's Orb, and make no mistake, for you you see, um, the thing to the thing to note about that the, the reason th this is this is the Founder's Orb, all right. It it says so right here. <laughs> 
I don't know how to pro I don't I, I don't know how to prove it's not the Crystal Vami Fae because we know nothing about the Crystal Vami Fae. Everything we know is just what politicians said, and he's lying his ass off this whole time. So how the hell would I know what the Crystal Vami Fae actually is or if it even existed? So I have to find something that links it to actually being the Founders Orb because we have evidence of that existing. Ah, well, <laughs> I can think of one way to prove it's the Founders Orb. If the legends are true, the Founders Orb should let people channel even if they don't have the the special bloodline, which I guess would be proved by the research notes. Take that. Nope. And just how does that piece of evidence prove that the relic is the Founders Orb? It doesn't, does it? Not by any means I can fathom. Sorry, Apollo, but, uh, I have to agree with the boss on this. <laughs> Me too, actually. <laughs> Me three defense. Yikes! Time to think that one over again, Mr. Justice. Yes, Your Honor. Hmm. Evidence that could break this. Oh, I was just supposed to say it doesn't exist? Why didn't that <laughs> house show up then? Why does this game break its own rules every five seconds? <laughs> when has that ev- Oh, 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 forget it. Just forget it. Am I going absolutely mad, or has every other time where you're you're able to make a mistake, your health has shown up? Is that not the point of the health showing up? Showing that at this point, the choice matters. I assumed that if the health didn't show up, the choice was a joke! That's what you told me! It doesn't seem to be anything we can use, at least not at this point. Not unless we can find something, this child won't be going anywhere. I spent like a half hour there, <laughs> are you kidding me? Whew! Uh, that's much better! What's this deal? I have a suggestion. Why don't we consider this from a different angle? Please. <laughs> I'm listening. What if the Defiant Dragons really were authorized to take possession of the relic? I'm afraid I don't know where you're going with this, Mr. Wright! Consider the Orb Transfer Agreement, which states, I agree to hand over the Founder's Orb to the Defiant Dragons if I will come to no harm. What if, as the last part suggests, this was written under duress? That would render the agreement null and void. I'm okay, I'm calm, I, I got it, I'm, I've got a handle on it. I've got a handle on it, just give me a minute, I'll work through this. I'll work through my, whatever's going on with me. I'll get through this. I hate video games. <laughs> I hate them. They were a mistake. It should have ended after the game crash of 78 or whatever. That would render the agreement null and void. <laughs> what are you suggesting, Mr. Wright? Well, you were on your little cave expedition, I was investigating Dr. Buff's accident. Dude, what the f- Why is Phoenix making fun of Apollo for almost dying? What is happening in this case? <laughs> this is so weird. It has to be an imposter. Not even if he was being coerced would Phoenix make fun of Apollo for almost dying. Drowning to death. One of his, like, big fears. That is so... Incomprehensibly f***ed up. <laughs> I'm so- this case is- this case is blowing my mind, dude. I feel like I'm playing a different video game series. Screw that, I feel like I'm playing a different medium, and I'm not sure- Are we- am I certain this is a video game, or is it like a torture device? Well, you were on your little cave expedition. I was investigating Dr. Buff's accident. And there was something you overlooked, Mr. Justice. Namely, that his accident might have actually been murder. Man, if only someone had ever suggested that either. What? Murder? Mr. Wright, you do realize such statements are not to be made lightly. Are you suggesting the Doctor was murdered by the Defiant Dragons? Yes, but follow me on for this for a sec. The books that came tumbling down were from the archaeology shelf. However, among that mountain of books was a single volume on psychology. What's more, there was some blood on it. And you feel this is important because... The books that came tumbling down were from the top shelf, the archaeology books. So why was there a psychology book there, is what you're saying? We know this because the doctor's books were meticulously organized by subject. Archaeology took up the entire shelf so that the psychology book is completely out of place. So you're proposing that this psychology book was taken some elsewhere, maybe out of this little gap here, and it was somehow used as a murder weapon, and then they just threw the, all the other books down to cover it up and make it look like uh, he died falling, I guess is what you're saying? Come to think of it, the shelves were arranged quite carefully. It's also worth noting that psychology books only take up a tiny part of the bottom shelf. You might wonder why a book on psychology was found amid a pile of archaeology books, but I believe I can explain what that single out-of-place book was doing there. The doctor was struck from behind while selecting a psychology book from the shelf. And that's when the blood got on the book. Precisely. And to make it look like an accident, he was buried under a mountain of archaeology books. Objection! <laughs> Wait a second! This is all just speculation, right? Or do you have proof that it was murder? 
Of course I do. You do? On a hunch, I had Detective Sky examine the doctor's head wound. She found that he'd been struck by the corner of some object or another. Wait, what? A wound like that couldn't have resulted from a fall to the floor, you know. Do you understand what this means, Mr. Justice? That wound makes it crystal clear that Dr. Buff was murdered! <laughs> it's playing his objection theme. What?! Well, that was unexpected. Who'd have thought we'd break out of the stalemate like this? Certainly not I! He pulled the ladder right from out from under us. Still, at least it wasn't a step ladder. If he thinks that's enough to make me back down, he's got another thing coming! Even if the cause of death was murder, what makes you think it was the Defiant Dragons? You should know better than to hurl baseless accusations. Objection! Objection! Did you forget who you're up against, Mr. Justice? Huh? The man who's known for bluffing and hurling back at baseless accusations? What is this tr- I don't understand! You didn't actually think I came to court without evidence, witnesses, and evidence, do you? Yes, I do! If there is one thing you've been shown to do in the past five games! It's gotta be a joke, right? There's, it's not actually him. Phoenix Wright would never say these words. <laughs> Phoenix Wright's self-awareness about how bad Phoenix Wright is about being a lawyer and still being an excellent lawyer somehow is like half of the writing of these games. What are you talking about? I would like to request further testimony from the plaintiff. Specifically, I would like the court to hear how he saw one of the rebels leaving the crime scene. He, he, he saw what? I thought we already knew that. Oh no, the crime scene. Yeah, maybe we didn't hear about that before. If you can prove it was murder, that's the end of our client's rights to the orb. Well, I, I mean, I guess, I, I get what you're saying, that according to the note, it makes it sound like he was being threatened by the Defiant Dragons, but the note just says, they don't get it if I come to harm. And, I mean, if we're taking that as legally binding, he came to harm, he's dead. <laughs> It's not ours anyway. <laughs> if you can prove it was murder, that's the end of our client's right to the orb. Did he have this up his sleeve the whole time? <sighs> How can Mr. Wright do this to us? He was just waiting to spring this trap. <laughs> this trial has taken another unexpected turn. But I must mention, Mr. Wright, that you have yet to identify the murder weapon? The object used to commit the murder was not located at the scene of the crime. You don't think it was the book? I mean, I guess it, it would have to hit someone pretty hard with a book to kill them instantly. The murderer likely disposed of it elsewhere. Dr. Buff was struck with the corner of some object. The time of death is between 10 and 11 p.m. I'm so- I'm fuming right now, but I don't want to leave it on a bad note. Which is why I'm carrying on. Well, I never thought we'd be deliberating the issue of murder at a civil trial. All right, Mr. Edition Wimperson, your testimony if you please. <laughs> this placard. <laughs> Prepare to be dazzled! I'm not sure how you fixed that with, like, three lines of tape at all. Dazzled by charismatic oration force in the crucible of campaign battles! I'm ready to be something, all right. Witness testimony! The rebel's crime! That evening I was walking alone, lost in thought. I passed by the doctor's house, and that's when I saw Mr. A Rebel. He was running out of the front door. It was around ten at night. Surely that must have been him fleeing the scene of the crime! A vote for me is a vote to end such violence! That is my promise to you! I didn't catch what, but something did seem off about that. So the plaintiff saw a possible suspect fleeing from the doctor's residence. And it was within the window of the estimated time of death. We have an estimated time of death? Sorry, wait. Oh, 10 11. Right, 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 right. Cause of death cerebral hemorrhaging after being struck in the back of the head with the corner of an unidentified object. It doesn't really explain the coffee stain on this. Unless it's a dry blood stain. No, she, she said she tested it for coffee. It's Emma did, right? I thought so. That's Rebel! What in the world were you doing there then? Addition saw Dats fleeing the scene in the night of the murder. Uh, st allegedly. Uh, one of the books is stained with coffee. It seems Mr. Rebel was loitering around Karine Village that day. There's evidence he was in the doctor's study as well. Isn't that right, Mr. Justice? <laughs> you mean the, the suitcase? <laughs> exactly. He must have been in quite the rush to leave that behind. Oh, and by the way, Your Honor. Mr. Rebel just so happens to be sitting in the gallery today. Ah! See? That's him trying to escape as we speak. Man, if you don't let that man get away! Wait. How did the bailiff catch him? <laughs> this time. Right, you backstabber! Why are you doing this to me? I don't know, man. He's acting very funny all around. <laughs> all right. Uh, counsel slash defense may question the plaintiff slash witness once more. <clears throat> Please proceed, Mr. Justice. All right. 
Cross-examination. The rebel's crime. No, that's stupid. Cross-examination! The rebel's crime! That evening I was walking alone lost in thought. I passed by the doctor's house, and that's when I saw Mr. A Rebel. He was running out of the front door. It was around 10 at night. Surely that must have been him fleeing the scene of his crime. So you don't actually know it was him? The vote for me is a vote to end such violence. That's my promise to you. Athena, I need help. <laughs> I'm too stupid for this entire video game. They're accusing the Defiant Dragons of murder. This sticks will lose the orb. Yeah, we need to sink politicians' testimony before it's too late. Stride is pulling out all the stops. Again, I'd expect nothing less from him. I expected a little more from him, ethically. That evening, I was walking alone, lost in thought. I passed by the doctor's house, and that's when I saw Mr. A Rebel. Hold it! Where exactly were you when you saw Mr. A Rebel? Right here, under this tree! I saw him dashing out of Dr. Boss' front door. And he didn't notice you. No, I was in by the tree. Is it really all that important to know from where the plaintiff saw Mr. A Rebel? Uh, you might be able to talk about his earrings otherwise, but uh, for the moment, I'll say no. Mm -mm. No, I don't believe it bears any relevance to this case. All right, then. Uh, will the witness please continue with his testimony? I think let's push on some other things and see if anything else more interesting comes out of happening. He was running out the front door. Hold it! Did you notice anything unusual? Mm, yes. His behavior was incredibly suspicious. His eyes were darting all around as he ran off in total panic. As soon as I saw that, I knew he had done something and it probably wasn't good. Despite that, you still didn't report it to the police? Who would have thought he had killed Dr. Buff? Not me. That's why I didn't report him. Oh. Oh, so you're saying you didn't see the body. So the witness didn't notify the police. Is that an important statement, Mr. Justice? Yeah. <clears throat> yes, it's important. I request that the witness added to his testimony. <laughs> sure, why not? I had no idea that Dr. Buff was dead. That's why I didn't call the police. But if you saw him from, uh, from this, from, if you were at this tree, you would have been able to see the body pretty easily. I'm pretty sure is what we're getting at. Oh, although I, I, I didn't tell you to add the other bit to your testimony. Hang on. Can I have him add this also? Yes, I believe it matters a lot. I ask that it please be added to his testimony. I was under this tree when I saw Mr. Rebel. He was running out the front door. I had no idea Dr. Buff was dead, so I should be able to present this. Objection! Objection! Mr. Atitian Wimperson, rather than Mr. Rebel. Wasn't there something else that should have had your undivided attention? Like what? Oh, yes, of course! A politician must also keep his finger on the electorate's pulse and focus on the nation's... That's sorry, but you're way off. I am? Mm. Would you care to explain, Mr. Justice? I wouldn't mind explaining. If the witness saw Mr. Rebel from his position here... Then he should have un but also been able to see the doctor's body. <laughs> After all, it was right next to a huge window. Why, I believe you have a point there. With the body that clearly visible to the witness. It's unthinkable that he wouldn't have reported it to the police, especially at night when the lights on inside would have made it super easy to see in there. Ugh. And on that sterling note, let's end this, ep this charade here, shall we? I'm sorry for the salt. I will try to... Cut around it and editing so you don't have to see too much of it. But if I'm salty, it's because this case salted my crops and killed my firstborn child, okay? This, this, this case and I are not getting along at all. But I won't belabor the point. That's all for now. <laughs> Next week on the channel is going to be some more Hitman 2 Silent Assassin. Next time here, less salt, maybe. Thank you so very much for coming around. Hopefully I'll see you around. Admiral's going to be out of here now. Peace! Okay, so yeah, you're pretty suspicious looking, I would say. Assassin has seen you and said, Oh, oh wait, okay, so what, what we want to do is, when we, the second we get a wind of view, I want to... Not. Oh, but there's the other one. Okay, we would ideally not like to hang around to be sure, we would start shooting.